Hello, this is a video on the use of the Cook Needle's Eye Snare, and there's some features of the snare that uh, I never knew when I first started using it, mostly because I used it as a last resort, and so I really hadn't studied how it worked. Um, and I think that may be true for a lot of folks. And so first I thought I'd show you what the pieces are that are available. Um, there's the, the two snares themselves, uh, there's a 20 millimeter version and then a 13 millimeter version and you'd think that the 20 millimeter version would be the best because it's bigger but it turns out that isn't always the case um, 13 millimeter may, may be easier to manipulate and easier to grab in many cases so don't the make mistake that I make which is always think bigger is better so it might be just as well to start with a 13 uh, the inner sheaths uh, there's a curved inner sheath and a straight inner sheath. Um, the inner sheath is what closes and locks the snare. Uh, and uh, um, th there's a problem with using the curved inner sheath that we'll talk about later. So I, I try to keep away from the curved inner sheath because it can create problems that you didn't anticipate or I didn't anticipate. So and then there's the workstation and they they call this the outer sheath. Um, and they, the workstation comes um, either straight or curved. And unfortunately, you get the, the, the straight one in the package when you buy the whole thing as a unit. Um, I think it's better if you use the curved inner sheath for reasons that we'll talk about later. Um, so what I typically like to start with is the, is the 16 French curved inner sheath, uh, the straight uh, 12 French inner sheath, and then the 13 millimeter loop snare. And the way that this thing works is that um, it has uh, this the snare loop here, uh, there's a threader loop, um, and then an inner sheath, and then the workstation. So the workstation, the inner sheath, and then the snaring mechanism. And the way it's designed is that you loop um, the, the snare portion over your lead and then extend the threader loop uh, using this plunger back here. And the, th the threader loop, um, if it passes on the outside of the lead, you're, you're good to go. Um, if when you extend this threader loop, it goes in here, instead of out here then you don't you didn't you don't catch the uh, you don't catch the lead uh, but you activate this threader loop by the plunger um, and here's the part that can be really confusing once you once you um, have the threader loop engaged properly you need to lock the snare in place and that's where this inner sheath that I mentioned the curve there's a curved inner sheath and a straight inner sheath um, this you need to slide this forward to lock it into place. And the mistake, one of the mistakes that I made um, was that if this inner sheath is, a, is advanced a little bit uh, while you're trying to snare before you've actually locked it in, you get into trouble. So that's, this is the first mistake I made. Um, as I would I would I had the inner sheath up a little bit where it's supposed to be back and then when I advanced the threader loop it would always go in the wrong place and I can tell you there were some blue words spoken because I couldn't snare the lead and I had no idea that the reason that this threader loop was not working properly was because I had inadvertently slid um, the the inner sheath up which prevented this threader loop from going where it needs to go. And this is particularly problematic if you're trying to aim the snare using the curved inner sheath. And that's why I try to stay away from the curved inner sheath because it's really tempting to slide that curved inner sheath up there to try to direct the snare where you want it to go. But if you do that, it's always going to, even if you manage to grab it, you're going to end up with a threader loop always going in the wrong place. Uh, so while, while you're trying to 
while you're trying to grab it and it before you advance this plunger to extend the threader loop you want to make sure that the inner sheath is all the way back because um, you can really get, just drive yourself nuts with this so I always start now with the curved uh, inner the curved uh, outer sheath or the workstation so if you want to direct it you direct it using the curved outer sheath rather than the curved inner sheath uh, and that way you can so you can aim which way you want to go by using the outer sheath and not the curved inner sheath and so you can see what we've, we've done is we've successfully grabbed it and once we've extended the threader loop and we have it now we need to lock it in place and to lock it in place you extend the inner sheath and this inner sheath will lock your uh, lead in place like that okay now the second big mistake I made was to inadvertently slide this back and it's very easy while you're tugging on the lead to slide this back which then releases the lead and to prevent that I now take a Kelly hemostat and lock it in place so once I've once I've successfully snared the lead um, like this um, you want to make sure that this this inner sheath stays up tight against the lead and if you don't in, the, in that case we did it we kept it nice and tight and here's another one and this is all going fine and this time um, I had it all locked up tight and you see can see the inner sheath here the threader loop the loop everything is going great and now look what happened I, I, I allowed the inner sheath to slide back I didn't I didn't put the Kelly clamp on there and see how how much how much further so this is sliding back because I didn't put the Kelly clamp there and once um, once the oh boy see and then once it lets go it just slides right through and it and you I've heard some very experienced extracting physicians complain about the system where it l releases the lead and it's just because it's very easy to slide this inner sheath back while you're pulling on things uh, and then if you do that then it gets released so to prevent that problem once you got it locked in place get yourself a heavy-duty Kelly clamp pull tight get it all locked up tight like that um, and then when you are pulling it you won't invert inadvertently slide this back and release the lead and it also keeps the plunger uh, in place so I ended up having to grab that with a gooseneck snare uh, and pull it out so um, I don't advocate using femoral extraction exclusively I think that it it's tremendously helpful when used in conjunction with pre extraction with uh, powered sheaths um, it, you could put a nice tension on the lead and makes it easier to track down the lead from above um, depending on how old the leads are how much calcification there is um, what I do is typically if possible uh, is is uh, grab the lead from below put tension on it from below and then I have a wonderful rail and I can bring my power sheath uh, down to the point where the uh, needle's eye snare is then release the needle's eye snare and then continue uh, with the rest of the lead and what's nice about this is is you don't get that that hypotension with with pulling on the lead because your 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 point of counter traction is actually uh, with the femoral extraction system um, I, f I found that to be very helpful so I hope this hope this is helpful again the two things that I found the mistake that I made over and over again didn't understand was when I was trying to grab the lead having the inner sheath too far forward and then once I had the lead successfully snared not locking it tight with that Kelly clamp to prevent it from being uh, released and then also starting with a curved femoral sheath the 16 French curved femoral workstation 
rather than the straight femoral workstation because that way you can direct the uh, snare where you want it to go without using the curved inner sheath because if you use the curved inner sheath to direct it you tend to push it forward and then you, you can never nail it because the uh, threader loop always goes to the wrong spot. I hope you find this useful. Uh, if you have any questions let me know. Thanks.